MC for today's event, Manager of Land Use and Environmental Planning with the City's Sustainable Development Department. I'd like to thank everyone for coming, joining us this afternoon for this important event in the City's Food and Agricultural Policy Development Process. I'd also like to thank all of the organizations and individuals who have chosen to exhibit information here today. We're pleased to have two members of City Council with us, who will say a few words in a moment and our guest speaker, Janine dallas -Sal, an expert on food policy and food systems. After our speakers conclude their remarks, I would encourage everyone to take some time to visit the displays and participate in the events that have been set up in the park around food and agriculture in the city. So with that, I would like to have His Worship, Mayor Stephen Mandel, provide a few words of welcome this afternoon, and then have Councillor Loken also add some remarks. Thanks, thanks, Peter. Uh, first of all, it's great to see such a wonderful turnout today, and uh, I'd like to applaud our uh, our department for applaud our department for putting together a. That's all the gold that we're going to gold on too poor. Um, all the we're putting together displays and trying to uh, impart to the citizens of Minnesota what we're trying to do with this with this initiative. Um, one of the things that. Uh, Many people in Edmonton have shown great concern about us, how we're going to interact with the growth of the city with agriculture within the city and how the two can play important roles in the growth of our, our, our great city. And that's not an easy answer. Um, it's a tough, it's an easy question, but a very difficult answer. And so over the last little while, we've put together teams of people to look at how, with uh, um, conversation with citizens, we look at putting together this a new vision for the city of Edmonton to find that balance. And so as a result of that, we're going to, over the next little while, and, uh, meet with people, uh, get their input, their ideas, in order to uh, refine and define some kind of a process and, and in turn find a result that we can bring to city council for uh, initiation of policy. Uh, one of the people that I look to is uh, someone who's been able to show what I would consider a, a real opportunity opportunist in, in this industry is Dieter Kuhlman uh, and his ability to put together a, a successful business in an agricultural environment within an uh, urban area. And I think that's the kind of initiatives we want to see happen because it, it allows it to be sustainable and so he can feed his family not just from the food he grows but from some of the money he makes and it also shows that he can retain and it can be successful so that's an important model that we can look to to be successful. We also want to be able to encourage our market gardeners to allow them to be to be successful and uh, I was just over at the market on the south side, the market down here today and, and you can see there are many successes. But how do we expand on that? How do we create opportunities so people can see that as a business opportunity so that they can retain their land for agricultural purposes and not want to convert it into some other form? And so all those issues need to be discussed. And uh, the other day I was talking to someone who uh, was quite interested in talking about this issue and, and they were saying one of the things we don't do is really as a city have ways in which we can really encourage our citizens to use part of their backyard um, for growing their own fruits and vegetables, not fruits as much, but all their vegetables. Um, being not much of a farmer, I don't know how to grow anything. And so it would be helpful if the, way the city had something, at least they could show people like myself how maybe to plant a garden, how to do those things. So part of this might be that uh, we can become even more sustainable ourselves by growing things in our backyards, those of us who have uh, single family homes, or those who have duplexes or areas in their backyard they can use. So there's a lot of opportunity in this, a lot of chance to, uh, to make some change and do some things that heretofore have not been done before. What the end result will be, I don't know. If we already knew what that was, we wouldn't be here today. But in order to make it successful, we, in order for these things to work well, uh, it's always had uh, council initiatives, and a council has headed this up. And Councilor Dave Loken has agreed to uh, be our council lead in this. And that really is making sure that he reports to council, uh, uh, that he makes sure administration is moving down a line that's in the, in the general idea of what council would like to see. I'd like to invite David up to say a few words, and maybe a few more words. But David? Thanks, Mayor, and thanks for those words. And I'm not uh, quite as seasoned as a mayor yet, so I'm actually going to read my remarks. Um, but uh, welcome, everybody. What a great, beautiful day it is out here. And I'm very excited to be part of uh, spearheading this, uh, this initiative. Um, urban agriculture is an important part of a sustainable local food system and can contribute to a more sustainable city. Urban agriculture includes many forms of food growing and agricultural activities within a city's boundaries. Some of those are, we are quite familiar with, community gardens, market gardens, backyard gardens, and the rich agricultural lands in the city's northeast and southwest. 
And there are other types of urban agriculture which we've only begun to explore, including vertical gardens, edible landscaping, and rooftop gardens. A food and agricultural strategy will give us direction about how to address food and agriculture issues in city planning and decision making. The experience of other cities tells us that this is something we cannot achieve alone. The city needs to collaborate with interested citizens, communities, organizations, and other orders of government to develop a citywide food and agricultural strategy. The Municipal de Development Plan, which we call the MDP, known as the Way We Grow, which Council passed just a year ago, contains a policy section on food and urban agriculture. This came about in part because of the hundreds of citizens who came to public hearings on the MDP and told Council their concerns about access to local food, growing food in the city, preserving rich land along parts of the River Valley with its unique microclimate, food affordability, food affordability landowner rights, urban development, combating hunger, promoting overall health. This interest shown by citizens has also influenced some other major City of Edmonton strategic plans. The City's plan to preserve and sustain Edmonton's environment, that we call the way we green, proposes that the City support a resilient food and agricultural system in Edmonton that contributes to the local economy and the overall cultural, financial, social and environmental sustainability of the City. The City's plan to improve Edmonton's livability, the way we live, includes a goal for Edmonton being an environmentally sustainable society. That goal can be implemented in part through promoting sustainable agricultural practices and a community food network. As the city has envisioned it so far, a food and agricultural agricultural st strategy, I better learn to say that word, I'm gonna be saying it more, will encompass a range of actions that the city of Edmonton will be involved in. These include supporting the establishment of a food policy council, working with community to create a local food charter, working with the region to develop a regional food policy, collaborating with communities, landowners, and other organizations to identify potential areas and lands for urban agricultural activities, establishing guidelines for integrating urban agriculture into public and private spaces and developments. As you might guess, this won't happen overnight, but we are committed to beginning this work. Some of this work has already begun. Last spring, workshops were held with organizations representing government, health, education, development, community, and food and agricultural interests to, to discuss and scope out what a city food and agricultural strategy could achieve for Edmonton. We're now at the next stage, and that's to engage the citizens of Edmonton in this subject. Today's Food in the City event is the public launch of this work. I am pleased to announce on behalf of the City of Edmonton and City Council, Today we are launching the city's food and agriculture, agriculture strategy. In the months to come, there will be further consulting with citizens on their views of the relationship of food and urban agriculture to sustainability and city planning. In the fall, there will be a formal, formal symposium on food policy, food systems, and urban agriculture. That will set the groundwork for the city of Edmonton to begin to develop appropriate municipal mechanisms, policies, regulations, to make urban agriculture possible and even flourish in our city. So thank you for joining us today. Your participation in this is crucial and we look forward to working with you to develop the many component pieces of a food and agriculture strategy for our city. The way that the city of Edmonton manages its food and agricultural resources in the future will have a huge influence on our ability to transform ourselves into a sustainable livable city. So before I depart, I just also want to thank Peter Ohm and his staff uh, for all the work that they've done on this. And uh, I look forward to working with you, uh, many of you in the months to come and probably the years to come and uh, in making this a successful initiative. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mandel and Councilor Loken. As I previewed, uh, uh, just prior to Mayor Mandel speaking, we're very pleased to have with us today Janine De La Salle. Janine is passionate about developing food policy and is Director of Food Systems Planning for HB Lanark, a leading company focused on sustainable planning and design to help create attractive, ecologically resilient and prosperous communities across North America. As an expert, Janine has a great depth of knowledge in food policy and in April of 2010, she co-authored a book, Agricultural Urbanism. I invite you to have a look at that. 
please join me in welcoming Janine. I've been invited here today to convert you all into Vancouver Canucks fans. Thanks for your support in playoff season. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, <laughs> seriously, um, I, I'd like to first just start off and congratulate the City of Edmonton for taking on this initiative. It's not an easy one, but it's uh, definitely an important one. And I'm just going to speak a little bit today about why this has been thought of, um, some of the, what, what it might be in it. Paint a picture in your mind of what this could possibly do for Edmonton. Uh, so, I, I come from HV Lanark, we're a planning design firm. I have, sort of have a weird job, I'm a food and agriculture system planner. And uh, that means that I work with local governments, uh, developers, and community organizations in develop, kind of setting up food strategies, food policies, neighborhood design for, uh, that think about and consider food and agriculture as part of the design um, and looking at those synergies, what those can be. Um, we've worked, uh, as noted, with the city of Edmonton um, early, or, uh, later last year in um, uh, working actually with some of you on the municipal development plan and the food and agriculture policy that was put in there and then the consequent uh, workshops with uh, stakeholder groups to kind of start getting an understanding of what is a, a citywide food and agriculture strategy. While this isn't the only one of its kind in the country, it is on the forefront of this thinking, um, which is which is really wonderful to see other cities across the country, um, including Vancouver, uh, Montreal, Toronto, and Calgary are now starting to develop similar strategies, similar approaches to food and agriculture in the city, and really asking the question, what is the role of food and agriculture within the town boundary? And it's an important question with um, a lot of uh, not easy answers and a lot of dialogue and conversation that need to go into finding those solutions. Um, one project we uh, I wanted to mention, uh, actually I wanted to mention two projects. Uh, we've, we're working with the University of Alberta on a very parallel and similar process. That, that project is also in its early stages, but it's really nice to see a parallel process between the municipal government and the university here, both uh, key decision makers in uh, land use and community development and other things. Uh, so I just wanted to mention that. Also, we worked. Um, I, I want to just mention briefly. Um, we worked on a project in in the Lower Mainland that really looked at integrating farming and community. Uh, and I, I, I want to mention that because it's a new thing, and it's we're we're just looking at how those ideas are coming together um, and what that looks like from a policy standpoint. But that there is opportunity to uh, be innovative in your designs and your plans, and looking at how food can actually be on the rooftop or on the corner or you have a community kitchen in your building as amenity space or so on and so forth. And none of the, none of these issues are easy. Uh, there's no, like I said, there's no, we've, I've never found food or agriculture particularly easy to plan for. Um, but, it, it, but it is important and we're realizing more and more the connection between local government powers and the, the food system and the agriculture system. So the, the Edmonton opportunity is, is a significant one. Um, when we're thinking, when we're talking about food and agriculture, we're not just talking about growing things in a field, we're actually talking about the whole system behind that. So everything that happens to something that's grown in a field, um, to where it gets uh, stored and processed and distributed around to buyers, um, who's buying it, where you're buying it, where you're eating it, celebrating it. Um, and the waste that happens uh, as a result of it and how that's uh, composted or recirculated back into the system. Uh, currently, uh, just out of, uh, when I was uh, making my notes for this presentation, I, I just reviewed the census information. Currently, uh, the city of Edmonton, um, and I, I think the census boundaries are slightly different than the town boundaries, but the current value of the gross farm receipts in Edmonton are in and around uh, $30 million. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's a, that's a huge amount of money. I imagine if a lot of that money was reinvested locally, what that would mean for job creation, local economic development, and other things. So I mentioned the role of local government in food, and you know uh, we apologize as, on behalf of our profession as planners. We've completely forgotten about food and the way we build our cities uh, in many ways. It's just not part of standard practice, not like transportation or housing or some of those other um, tried and true planning categories. 
Um, some of the things that we're seeing a lot of success in in other places is supportive land use for food and agriculture systems. That That's kind of the idea of making space for direct marketing. The, the farmer's market you are very fortunate to have here is a, a wonderful example of that. Farmers make three times more profit when they can sell directly to consumers. And so if we can make farming viable from a financial standpoint, then we're going to see new farmers come in. We're going to see uh, farmers continue to farm and be able to, to supply food to food and agriculture products to local and international markets. Also, municipalities have a lot of special projects they invest in. They want to see something happen. They want to um, kind of catalyze action in the community. And that's something that, you know, food is obviously um, a key one of those things. Um, you know, our mayor in Vancouver, Mayor Robertson, followed suit um, with Obama and he put a community garden in front of City Hall. And I, I just love the concept because you're ripping up grass, you're putting in food, and it's a, just a signal and a demonstration of that. Another thing that local governments are essential to is, is linking uh, to other partners uh, like the health authorities, like the province, like the universities. And a, a, a strategy like we're talking about today, even though we're in the early stages of understanding what that really is and what, what it's going to achieve, uh, kind of scoping out those partnerships and actually developing those partnerships through the process of developing a strategy is one of those key things that a uh, municipality can be at the center of and be a key facilitator of. And of course, uh, one of the more conventional things is agriculture planning. Um, looking at our agricultural land, what, it, what is that agricultural land base? How are we using it now? How can we use it better? So the intent behind the citywide food and agriculture strategy I believe is to really capture a lot of these opportunities that are out there and are currently there, uh, but not necessarily coordinated. Of course, I mean, we can see by the, all of the people here today and all the booths and information, there's already a ton of stuff going on um, in Edmonton, uh, more so than in a lot of other municipalities that I've visited and have been uh, involved in planning for. And that's really encouraging to see a lot of the, the work comes from the community, the vision, the ideas, the energy comes from the community. And then it's our jobs as planners to kind of translate that into a policy set or design guidelines for neighborhood development. So, you know, what it, what is a food and egg strategy? I mean, this is sort of a new thing, really. What what are we talking about? Um, you uh, you've probably perused or read through, been aware of um, the other plans uh, that your that Edmonton has. Um, so this would be kind of akin to um, a transportation plan or a housing plan. It would be kind of at that level. It's raising the discussion around food and agriculture to those other kind of basic needs that planners and cities uh, uh, provide to their citizenry. Um, it also would be a coordinating document, connecting the dots between the people in the community, the health authority, the province, um, key points of uh, contact within the city. It would provide policies um, where appropriate to support um, the things that are decided that we want to support. Uh, it could also introduce targets and metrics for tracking progress over time. How much food are we growing within the town boundary? And how is that going to be different in 10 years? Um, where is that product being sold? How, much, how many dollars are going back into the farmer's uh, bank accounts? How many new farmers are coming on board and starting farm businesses? And at the end of the day, this strategy is a planning tool. It's, it's, a, it's a tool that decision makers can use to make decisions and they can they have guidance around how to do that and they have all this information that's collected from the community and different stakeholder groups distilled into one document that they can review and bring into discussions around land use and other things. So we, we were fortunate to be um, part of the uh, stakeholder workshops that happened last year and I just wanted to uh, describe to you some of the really key themes that came out of that those sessions when we we were basically asking people what is this to you how can this strategy work to um, kind of serve your your needs and what are your needs and everyone had different needs right so one of, but the, these are the central themes that cut across all the different people it needs to be an Edmonton based approach and that's obvious but sometimes as planners we're at fault for just cookie cuttering things but what we really need to do with this strategy is build on the, the needs and assets that are here in Edmonton. And there is, like I mentioned, there's a ton of asset here. So and where are those needs? We need to do that assessment. 
the, the strategy will consider the full range of opportunity and not just focus on one area or one part of the food system. So we're looking at from production to processing distribution all the way to waste recovery and education across the city and looking at multiple scales and multiple locations for those things to happen. It has a meaningful and engaging process to speak to people who live here to understand what you want, what the ideas are, and hopefully having a generative process where people are actually thinking, questioning what they want and maybe uh, trying to work together on some, some common ideas and common solutions. Uh, a key part of this will also be a robust technical and policy aspect where we have a defensible baseline to work from and we collect that data and then we can measure progress against in the future. And at the, I think the, one of the most important parts is really clarifying what the role of the city is in this work. There may be things in the strategy that are outside of the purview of the local government or outside of Edmonton proper. Um, but we shouldn't ignore those things. We should put them on the table and earmark them and, and then figure out how we can connect other partners into um, implementing any of those actions. So what will this strategy do? Um, some of these things have been mentioned, so I'll, I'll go through these fairly quickly. Uh, but it will establish a vision, goals, and objectives for, for what we're trying to do here. And that is a co-creation process with the community and stakeholder groups. It sets the context and rationale. Why are we doing this? What's important about food? Why, why is the city caring about this? And investing a great deal in, in this process and hosting events and, and allocating staff time. And how do, we, how do we make sense of that? Also, another key part of this, I, I believe, is possible is to develop tools and actual practical things that planners, community, uh, developers, anyone can use to um, think about food and think about how your role in food and agriculture um, can influence or be influenced by this strategy. And of course, we, we need to build on the many things that are already happening in Edmonton, um, the community work, as well as the existing plans and strategies and looking at how food and agriculture can actually help to uh, realize other goals and other strategies and build on the momentum behind sustainability and complete communities that you have going here. So, you know, aside from the strategy itself, the, from, from my perspective as a food system planner, when, I, when I'm doing my trend analysis to kind of look at, you know, where opportunities are for communities, um, I just want to go through some of the big things that, I, kind of the scary, this is my end of the world part of my talk, where, where it's like, oh, this is, this is all horrible, why are we even bothering? Uh, but then I'm going to bring it back to, to happy, so don't worry. Uh, we know that the that obesity in Canada is costing the federal government uh, over two billion dollars annually. Um, a lot of that's diet related, and that's just one diet related illness. So we're seeing that we're unhealthy. We're increasingly becoming unhealthy, and food has a lot to do with that. So how what is the role of local food in health is a is a question that the strategy can start grappling with. In times of economic recession, uh, vulnerability in our, our you know bank accounts and and our investments looking at how to diversify the economy to be able to absorb those um, uncertain times and those things that we can't anticipate and are very difficult to plan for. Uh, but when you can have a resilient economic base that has a bunch of different facets, and when it's less vulnerable that way, how, how can food and agriculture actually play a significant role in that? Another thing we're, we're seeing out there is the increasing capital costs for farmers. So we're looking at increasing energy costs and we're looking at increasing land prices. So in, in a world where we want to see farmers, we want to support farmers, we want to see new farmers coming on board, how do we reconcile those things to encourage farming and support, support farming from a, from a municipal government perspective? The changing nature of farmer succession. Farms don't get passed down often anymore from parents to kids. Uh, new farmers are coming from different places. How do we inaugurate, the, how do we bring them into the farm system? How do we set up mentorship incubator farm systems where they can sort of learn from, from seasoned farmers who have been in the practice for potentially generations? And of course, looking at the, the role of, of growth management um, in, in Edmonton and how that, how that impacts uh, the need for new housing and where, where that housing goes. So at the end of the day, the, the strategy really looks to identify the public opportunity between a healthy food and agriculture system. And what is that and what does that mean and how do we plan for it? 
I mentioned some of the other cities that have been doing this work. So Edmonton is now um, officially part of the leadership group in in Canada on pushing this out. And this isn't because Edmonton is uh, idealistic and thinking about, wouldn't it be interesting if we did a food strategy? It's actually a very pragmatic response to very real drivers, and I've mentioned some of those already. So a lot of the new opportunities for, for agriculture, um, some of the things that are coming up that are really interesting and don't fit into our kind of understanding of, of agriculture that we've had in the last little while are things like the shift in consumer demand where people are willing to spend more money um, if they can on, on fresh local foods because they want to support their farmers. They like the taste of the local food. They enjoy coming down on a beautiful market day to see their neighbors, to listen to the great band over there. I don't know what their name is, but they're amazing. I'm gonna get the CD on my way out. Um, the emergence of the uh, reemergence of the market garden, and we're seeing um, all over the country examples of business farm businesses that are more intensive and they're growing sort of uh, more kind of food stuff as opposed to sort of um, a feed crop. And they're proving out in the market. They're making money, and they're operating sometimes on less than two acres. So and when we're talking about urban agriculture, it's not just the community garden, it's potentially these small farms and urban farmers are um, emerging as this new farming cohort, which is very interesting and there's a lot of energy there and there's a lot of movement behind that, so that's not something to ignore. Um, the idea of, of food hubs, though, central facilities, not unlike the market here, where you have a co-location of multiple food functions. So you have process, processing and distribution, maybe you have an aggregation, so all of the products, all the carrots from the region come into that facility and then a purchaser from say the city of Edmonton can go down and get all of the carrots they need for, for their cafeteria. Currently there's no way for that purchaser to actually make those deals. It's very, or it, it, there's, it's possible, but it's very difficult and time consuming. So it oftentimes doesn't happen. So how can we actually replace that local food infrastructure like that processing distribution storage in central facilities so that you can actually buy large quantities of, of local product? And I know that um, Augustana campus has done a lot of work on how to make these connections and actually bring a lot of the food into their cafeteria. And they, they're definitely a, a leadership model for us to be looking at. So this, the citywide food and agriculture strategy, it'll capture future opportunities. It'll enable the city to deepen the understanding of the role of food and agriculture in Edmonton. And the reason we're here is because during your MDP process, enough people came out and said, we, we're asking questions about the role of food and agriculture in our city, and we want to, we want to have a long-range planning strategy to, to really understand what that is and how to take advantage of it. And at the end of the day, it's enabling our decision makers to consider food and agriculture when they are making decisions about budgets, about land use, about investments, about staffing, all the things that they have on their plate. If we don't give them that voice, if we don't give them those tools to actually be able to grapple with this, because it's, it's a very challenging and constantly changing topic, food and agriculture. It's every level of government, it's every place in the country, it's, it's up, down, all around. So, being able to decipher that for um, for our for our local leadership is, is really important uh, function of the of the strategy. So the citywide food and agriculture strategy is a remarkable opportunity for Edmonton to get ahead of the curve. The immense public good that results from a resilient food and agriculture system is rapidly gaining recognition, and many towns and cities are beginning to understand the role and the benefits of a strategic approach. By starting the conversation around the role of food and agriculture in Edmonton, you are well on your way to not only being in the leadership group on these policy issues, but also enabling a pragmatic response to social, economic, and environmental change. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janine, and you certainly have uh, provided us with some interesting insights uh, and, cons and to much to consider about the complexity of this project. Before we finish the formal part of the event, I again like to thank everyone for being here, particularly our speakers, Mayor Mandel, Councillor Loken, and again Janine. And uh, we have activities and presentation materials uh, available on food policy and urban agriculture, as you can see in the uh, tents behind you. And further, city staff will be circulating throughout the park until about 2 p.m., collecting feedback to help inform the upcoming public consultation process and guide us through our next steps in delivering this project.
So I would encourage you to find one of our staff and complete a for, uh, feedback form. Also, we'll be giving away seat packages. Some of you may have already received those. They will be available from our staff and at our displays. The packages have our web address to get more information about this upcoming initiatives. And just by the way, again, that's edmonton.ca slash food and agriculture. So again, thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of the afternoon.